What is good everyone? I hope you are all doing well. Today we are going to be taking a look at the PC performance for Project Cars 2, which just released yesterday here on the PC. So as with all of the new major titles out there, I wanted to get let you guys know how this game is running on the PC. I actually went and picked this game up over on CD Keys. I paid about $50 for it, so if you do want to go shop over there, I will leave my affiliate link down in the description below, which helps me earn a couple of bucks if you do decide to buy it from them. But of course, you could get the game on Steam as well for full $60, and then you would have the option of getting a refund in case that you decide it's a game that you don't like or it's not running well enough for you. But hopefully I can at least put that second concern to bed and let you guys know how the game is running and what you could maybe expect on your system. So I went through and I tested this game on multiple graphics cards and resolutions. For AMD I tested on Vega 56 and the RX 580 and for Nvidia I tested on the GTX 1060 and the 1080 of course with all of the latest drivers. So for Nvidia that was 385 dot six nine and for amd it was 17.9.2 and i did all of my benchmarking in my frame rater build along with the i7 7700k which is overclocked to five gigahertz and i also got 16 gigabytes of ram in there i also wanted to mention that on the graphics cards i was not using any additional overclocking i kept everything at stock clock speeds the only option that I adjusted in MSI Afterburner was to increase the power limit slider on every one of these cards so that we were getting the best potential performance out of the cards. And here we are now in the options menu. And first, I want to get out of the way that this game is fully supporting ultra wide as well as high refresh rate. So you shouldn't have any concerns about that right there. Even the menus are running in ultra wide. So really good job done as far as the ultra wide compatibility is concerned on Project Cars 2. You can run in a windowed mode or in full screen mode, but of course I did all of my testing at full screen mode. And I was testing at high settings on all of the cards used here. Texture resolution you can see up is, is up at high. That's actually the highest that that goes here, which is the case for a lot of these options here. Not all of them go up to ultra, but I tested everything at high here going all the way down. You've got anisotropic filtering up at 16 times and I did have V-Sync off. You do have MSAA with low, medium, and high, which doesn't really give us a good explanation there. It's probably two times, four times, and eight times, but I would have liked to have seen that honestly if I could nitpick about something. For my anti-aliasing solution in my testing, I used SMAA up at high. That does go up to ultra, but I just used it at high, and I find SMAA is really one of the best forms of anti-aliasing out there as far as the visuals versus the impact of it on your performance. Now, we've also got a super sampling option here, which I did not use because that is just going to cripple your frame rate in a lot of cases as, as, it, as basically upping your resolution the higher that you put it up here. Now, we've also got reflections, environment map, car track, pit crew, and shadow detail, and enhanced mirror option. We've got motion blur, which I did run off because it looks hideous, of course, and I rendered one frame ahead in the options. By default, that would set to two, I believe, but I put it at one. And we've also got detailed grass and particle levels, all that you can adjust in here to hopefully get the best performance possible on your system. If you're not getting good performance, obviously you can go in here and adjust some options and hopefully it will scale well to your system. As far as my testing methodology was concerned on Project Cars 2, this could be kind of a difficult game to benchmark as there are a lot of variables that could be introduced into a race. You can personally just mess up on your own, even if you were on a track all on your lonesome. But of course, you know, you want to have more cars in the track to hopefully get the most realistic, you know, scenario if you were to actually be playing the game. So I was actually able to take advantage of the replay functionality in the game, which was great. I was able to just go through a race, get a good run, and then save it and then play it back in real time. It's not like a pre-recorded like video type thing. It's still rendering the game in real time, even when you're going through on the replay. So that, it, that was basically allowed me to have my own built-in game benchmark of my race that I did here. And I had 15 cars on the track, and in order to get a good mix of weather environments, you can actually set it to cycle between weather environments if you want. So I had it going from a clear day into raining, followed by snowing, and then finishing up with a full-on blizzard towards the end of my lap run. The full, the full lap was about two and a half minutes or so. So a good mix of weather environments. We've got 15 cars in the track, so a lot of cars out there to, you know, which is be a little bit more realistic to what you might see 
when you're actually playing the game. And I let the replay run on the cockpit cam because that is what I would personally prefer to use. And I think most racing fans would want to have the cockpit cam going. Of course, you could do the chase cam as well. But I found that even with the different camera angles, it didn't really affect performance all that much anyway. But yeah, I did all my comparisons here with the cockpit cam. And we'll start off here with the RX 580 and the GTX 1060 in a side-by-side -side comparison. This footage that you'll be seeing was captured at 1440p on those high settings that I mentioned and all the graphics options that I went over there. And you can see both of these cards actually are handling the game extremely well, even at 1440p. We did see a couple of dips down in the race going just below 60 FPS only by a couple of frames, but most of the time here we're up over 60, even getting into the 70s and 80s at times on these two mid-range GPUs here at 1440p. Obviously at 1080 you'll get even better performance and I'll have all of the averages and 1% lows here in a minute, but yeah, like I just wanted to get that across that the RX 580 and 1060 are both running this game extremely well. We're not seeing a ton of video memory even getting used. Both cards at 1440 are below 2500 megabytes of VRAM being used here. Also worth noting is the CPU, which you can see is getting spread out across all of the threads here on the 7700K. So um, yeah, the developers here have done an incredible job, I feel, of optimizing this game to take advantage of additional threads, fully utilizing the GPU, and it's not that taxing as far as video memory is concerned. So just really great job done here. But let's go ahead and pull up the average FPS and then I'll show you the 1% low here. Starting off with our 1080p and 1440p analysis, we could see going across here in descending order. We've got the GTX 1080 sitting at the top, of course, at 1080p, getting an average of 135 FPS. RX Vega 56 got 111, the 1060 got 95, and RX 580 rounded that up with 84 FPS. And even going up to 1440p, the mid-range GPU is still staying above 60 FPS average. The 580 coming in last year with 66 FPS and the 1060 winning by not that many frames here, only winning by what, six frames there on the 1060 getting 72 average FPS. So both cards running the game very well, although it does appear to be favoring Nvidia a little bit. Uh, Vega 56 got an average of 93 FPS at 1440p and the GTX 1080 got 120 FPS. So if you're looking to run either of these resolutions with any of these cards, you shouldn't have any concerns whatsoever about the game. And the, really the key thing is that you saw the opt you saw the optimization and the full utilization of the system, which is what you want to see. So even if you're running something a little bit lower than this, you can at least have the peace of mind that it's going to be fully leveraging your hardware that you have out there, which is really the best thing you can possibly ask for with any game on the PC. Switching over into the 1% lows now, we did see at 1440p, the 1060 and the RX 580 did come a little bit down below 60, and the side-by-side -side comparison, we saw that as well at 1440, but it was not by much. Like, the lowest I saw it go was around, like, 55, 56 FPS, so, yeah, ran absolutely fantastic, even for 1440p. 1080p, obviously, you're going to do even better. None of these cards had 1% lows below 60 FPS, so great optimization yet again. Going into the ultra-wide performance now, you can see that the GTX 1080 got an average of 101 FPS, and the Vega 56 got 78, and the 1% low were also very good here for both of these cards, with the GTX 1080 getting 80, and the RX Vega 56 getting 65, which is kind of funny there. 1080 got 80, and the 56 got 65, which is 56 reverse. Half-Life 3 confirmed. Half-Life 3 confirmed. So that is all of the performance numbers that I was able to collect here on Project Cars 2 with the cards that I tested. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and found it informative. If you did, don't forget to leave a like on it down below. And if you're going to pick up, you know, if you're going to pick up Project Cars 2, let me know down in the comments and how it works for you on your system, especially if you're running on a card or a CPU that I didn't get a chance to test here. I would appreciate if you take the time to put your numbers down you know, in, in the comments and, you know, let other people know what you're getting if you're running on a different car that would help, you know, kind of spread information as really what we want to do here is let people know how the game can run on multiple systems. I can't test every graphics card and CPU in the world. So if you have any data that you want to share, please feel free to leave it down in the comments below for other people out there. But I'm going to go ahead and get on out of here, guys. Once again, if you do want to pick up Project Cars 2 and save a little bit of money, you can do that over on CD Keys and help support the channel. 
And uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and get on out of here, and I will catch you guys in the next video. Turn.